Hi and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman, a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This podcast is for those of you who are wanting to really rock your life and health and live from a place of prevention. Let's get into today's episode. But Jen, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I can't keep going. Well, you got a choice of grit or quit. That's the bottom line. You know, I get that kind of message often where people in their mind, they've gone, yep, time for a reset, time for whatever the goal is. And they let their mind take themselves out of the game. How do we get the grit? How do we find that grit? That's what I want to talk about in today's podcast. It's really interesting in today's world that um, it's kind of like the world glorifies quick wins, instant success versus my generation, which was very much about hang in there. Stuff's going to take time. I even remember with business, you know, back in the day, back in the day, if you started a business, if you could cover costs and even just break even by five years, you were going to be successful. You were going to make it. Nowadays, if people haven't made a million bucks in a year, they go, yeah, nah, it's not for me. I think, what? And with their health, they've been off, off track for, you know, days, weeks, months, or years. And if they're not heading in the right direction in, in, in one, two, or three weeks, they're thinking, nah, too hard, I give up. There, there'll be a, you know, a, a quick fix kind of medical solution or something like that. And it's like, no, it doesn't matter if it's our health, our money, our exercise, our relationships, even me writing a book. Um, it doesn't matter what the goal is. At some stage, we've got to knuckle down and actually do the work. And I know that's boring as batshit, but it's the bloody truth. So I think back to when I was writing my book, my new book, which I'm about to literally launch in two weeks as I write, as I record this, um, April 1st this year, uh, well, it had been playing in the back of my mind I was going to to do this book. Anyway, the uh, the end of March, I came back from a speaking trip into China and I went, it's time, it's time to actually write this book. And so in my mind, the discipline that I use to write a book is uh, I just brain dump a page a day. I'm teaching you my secrets, how I write books. I brain, brain dump a page a day. I know that in three months, a page a day of just brain dump is basically enough uh you know, it's about 100 pages, and that will pull out once it's been typeset and everything to about 150 pages. And so with this book, I went, Jen, just, you know, a day, a page, a day, a page. And I had a lot of life going on, and it would have been really easy to not stick to that discipline of just doing a page a day. However, I I really made the commitment because I know if I, if I write a page a day for three months, and then I've got a month of editing, a month of typesetting, and then I can move into you know, that last month, that six month of uh, launching the book, which is exactly where I am. I'm on target. So it was like uh, April, May, June uh, was writing. Uh, July, I got it to the typesetter. Um, August, mid-August, back from the typesetter. And now into September, we're doing all the last bits to get ready to, you know, with printing and uh, and getting ready to launch it. I'm going to launch it on the Equinox. So for me, six months is a is a timeline to stick to whenever I write any book. I've always written my books the same way. I've written 15 books over the years. So it would have been easy at a few times to just push the timeline out, just push the timeline out. It's okay. I don't have to hurry. Energetically, I I really believe in energy and the power or the the intention of mine to launch the book on the equinox. Equinoxes are all about new beginnings. It's setting up the next season of life, all those things. I really wanted to, to launch it on the equinox. However, uh, you know, some things were taking longer that were out of my control and I had a choice. I could get bent out of shape about it or I could just keep working on all the other parts in the back end so that as um, those elements were completed, I was able then to still run on track, so to speak. So it's, I've had to really knuckle down a few times with this book. And it, and at one stage, the book's called Fuck the Stress. And at one stage, my assistant even said to me, Jen, lucky you're writing a book about fuck the stress. Just do what the book says. And I went, you're right, man. It's like, I just, you can't control everything. All we control is our response to things. So I even had to, to dig deep 
uh, and really hang in there to my timeline that I was going for um, versus what I would see as quitting and lengthening out the timeline and delaying the launch and all those kind of things. So it's going to happens to all of us and we get to make a choice to, to persevere, to dig down and actually hang in there and do it um, or not. And I know myself, if I like my word to myself is, is law. There is nothing, no higher commitment on this planet than me sticking to my word to myself, let alone to other people. And so it doesn't matter what the goal is. At some stage, we get to just go, I'm keeping my word. I'm keeping my word. And so that's part of what I do. And I wanted to talk into a couple of ways uh, or a couple of things around that whole process of being able to find your grit when maybe you want to quit. So we know it's grit is kind of like that unyielding determination to just go, it's mine, it's mine, I'm going to do it. And I also promise that as soon as we commit to anything in our life, the universe is going to test us to say, how bad do you want that thing? So uh, to be able to keep the doors or, you know, like literally I see things as doors, sliding doors, in fact. So everything, whether it's an obstacle or an easy way through, it's like a door and I get to open the door and go, yep, keep going or oh, I don't really like that door. And I think of people like Edison. I think of people like Einstein. Those guys were such brilliant, brilliant brains, but they were so okay about failing so often. They would just try stuff. It wouldn't work. And, that, and they wouldn't go, no, oh, that's it. I give up. They just went, yep, go, go, go. And they brought such incremental change to the world by being able to hang in there. So Sometimes a failure, if you want to put it that way, or just not being able to stick to whatever it was, it can be really in your face. Um, and I think of surfing with this. So surfing has been the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. And it's also been the most frustrating thing I've ever done in my life, like in crazy cool. And the reality is I have to fall off the surfboard to improve. I have to fail. I have to fall off stack the board, take in too much water, all that kind of stuff to be able to grow my skills and grow my grit and grow my resilience and all those things to be able to keep surfing. And, you know, it's nearly a decade that I've been surfing now. And in my mind, I'm still an early intermediate. And I think at two sessions I had last week, uh, Wednesday last week when I was surfing, I swear it was the suckiest session. It was beautiful conditions. I should have been able to surf my ass off. Uh, and I didn't. It was just sucky. <laughs> and I got out of the water. I did a reel about it and stuff. And, you know, I'd caught one wave and I was very grateful for that. However, I was like, what the fuck are you doing, Janice? It's nearly 10 years. Um, and what I've learned over time is that when I do fall, fall off the board and doesn't go well, all those things, I celebrate it. So it's kind of like, yeah, I'm a step closer to learning that thing I need to do that I'm trying to do to be able to, you know, maneuver my surfboard differently. And um, the next day I went out there, same conditions, and I fucking nailed it. I absolutely nailed it. I have wave after wave after wave. Same con different conditions. Um, and it would have been easier the day before when I'd had a sucky session to just go, yeah, no, I'm just going to have a couple of days off. And I didn't. I hung in there. And you just, you, we move through those layers of learning, which is really cool. I watched a, a show on Netflix um, with Alice uh, um, six months ago, and it was about the rising stars in Wimbledon. And I watched so many of the rising stars. It's like they rose up through the ranks really quick and got to, you know, a Wimbledon final, for instance. Uh, most times they didn't win on their first go. And it's kind of like I, the message I got from that show was that we have to we have to lose to win. We have to build that grit, that resilience to be able to go to that next level in whatever it is we're doing. So whatever you've got going on with goals, health or exercise or relationships or business or wealth, whatever it is, um, we have to hit the assembling box. We have to fall over. We have to get back up uh, to be able to grow the mindset the or physicality, whatever it is, to be able to complete and really nail that goal. So passion uh, gets to sit behind everything, okay? 
So grit is not just about being able to endure and hang in there and hang in there, hang in. It's the passion for how badly you want that goal. How bad do you want that goal? What's it going to mean to you? You know, I say to people when I'm working with them one-on-one and coaching and that, you know, we, we've got their goals, everything that they're wanting. And it's like, how will you feel in three to six months when you nail those goals? And so it's just like, oh, I'll feel amazing. And then I'll say, and so how will you feel in three to six months' time if you haven't achieved those goals? And it's like, oh, you know, it, it's a totally different vibe. And so all those moments, I've, I've got a, a picture in my office uh, that says, you know, whenever you're ready to quit, remind yourself why you started in the first place. It's kind of like the moment we want to give up, the moment we want to quit, we want to really remind ourselves why you've hung in there as long as you have, why you really want to nail that. Because it's only our why that's going to really get us to where we want. doesn't matter what the goal is. That's it's that passion to achieve whatever that thing is allows us to find our grit when we're tested and we're going to be tested. So what are some simple steps if I think about four or five of them? First one is we've got to have clear long-term goals. Short-term goals, you've got to be able to have something to be able to uh, achieve because that's what gives us the motivation to keep going. But we want to have really clear goals. We want to be able to embrace the challenges. When I feel I fall off the surf, what is like, all good. I didn't have that attitude for the first few years and it was just torturous. Nowadays, it's like, yep, I have to fall off to grow better. So embrace those challenges. We've got to have the mindset right. So again, like uh, I found for me, if I, I have that goal, okay, and then I, I make sure I've got plenty, I break down that goal into lots of little milestones so that um, I can have the little wins to keep getting the little dopamine hits to be able to keep my grit. Um, I've got, if you saw my desk, try and get a couple of things for those watching this on YouTube. I have, My desk is covered in colored bits of paper. It works for my brain. It's not everyone's system, but it totally works for my brain. And so as I, I don't have a to-do list, I have colored bits of paper on my desk. So as I complete something it's just like it doesn't matter what it is you know numerous little wins during the day it's like yay, throw out that little bit of paper and that works surrounding ourselves with people who are going to uplift you and believe in your dreams and goals so that if you're having a wall kicking moment which you will they can go come on you got this what's you know and they'll they'll help to uh to give you an emotional lift and then the last one is to actually just be gentle with ourselves Man, I, I hear and see people, and I used to do it in the, in the past too. I gave myself such a hard time for where I was versus where I wanted to be. And um, the wisdom of age, I guess, I'm much kinder to myself nowadays when challenges take me off track. And so I am. It's just like I'll, I'll notice that I'm off track with something, and, it, and instead of giving myself a hard time, I'll just go, oh, okay, cool. How good that you actually noticed this time, this time Jen? And I can come back to centre quicker. That's really important. As a naturopath, it doesn't matter what it is. We care about how quick you come back to centre faster. And so, you know, choosing grit over quit is um, uh, it's what's got to happen. And I just want to say also that consistency isn't doing something 100% of the time right. Consistency, which is the way we achieve anything masterfully, is to just, as we go off track, we come back on track. As you go off track, we come back on track. That's being consistent. That's going for grit over quit. Okay, so if you're challenged, just go, okay, okay, off track, all good, I'm back. And that's going to build your consistency. That's what's building your grit, and you'll be able to hang in there. But like I say, I, I have a, a sign in my office, which I can't quite reach to at the moment, but it, it's about reminding myself why I started whatever that commitment was in the first place why is so important. I hope that helps. Um, have fun digging deep. It is a season change right now. It's early spring here in Australia and it's a time to reset for the next quarter, the next season in our lives. Make it, you get to make it as exciting and fulfilling as you choose. See ya. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed my podcast, please let me know by leaving a review on Apple Podcast. Every month, I draw one lucky person who leaves a review, have a free one hour consultation with me. 
Be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you're tuning in from so that you always catch the next episode. I welcome your emails and you can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, remember, when it comes to life, live it, love it, and get on with it.